This video will demonstrate how to configure EasyPDF SDK for server-side use in ASP and ASP.NET web applications. The same steps that we're going to cover can be found in the EasyPDF user manual under the Preparing Your Server topic. Now I'm going to show the first step, which is EasyPDF SDK Loader Setup. To begin this step, you'll want to go to the services section of your control panel and locate the EasyPDF SDK 6 loader service. What we want to do here is configure this service to run under an administrator account. Now I've already created an administrator account called EasyPDF user. Right click on the service, select properties, go to the logon tab, and go ahead and provide the credentials for, for that account. Save your changes, and go ahead and start the service. That's all you need to do for step number one. Step number two is Microsoft Office Setup. This step is very quick and simple, and we've already done it ahead of time. All you really need to do here is make sure you log into Windows as the administrative user, easy PDF user in our case, and start Microsoft Office while you're logged in as that user. Now, when you start Microsoft Office, what you're looking for is any pop-up dialogs that appear. If you do see any pop-up dialogs, go ahead and dismiss them. Now, we can see here that I've got Microsoft Office open and there are no pop-up dialogs. The reason this is important is pop-up dialogs can stall the conversion process. Once you verify that no such dialogs ex exist, you're done with step number two. Step number three is COM security setup. This is where the bulk of the configuration required happens. To begin this step, go to the component services section of your control panel. Once you're there, navigate to my computer, right click on my computer, select properties, and go to the COM security tab. Under Launch and Activation Permissions, click the Edit Default button. Now, the users that you'll need to configure here will vary depending on whether you're using ASP or ASP.NET and also on the version of Windows. The idea for this step is to assign local launch and local activation permissions to the appropriate users. Two users will always need to be configured regardless of your version of Windows or if you're using ASP or ASP.NET. One user that's always required is administrators. We can see here that local launch and local activation permissions have already been granted to administrators. The other account that's always required is called Internet Guest Account. The easiest way to find these various accounts is to click the Add button and then click the Advanced button. And once you're on the Select Users or Groups dialog, click Find Now. That'll list all of the users that are available. The user we want to add now is called Internet Guest Account. That one usually shows up as IUSR underscore followed by your machine name. So I've highlighted that user for my machine. Go ahead and click OK and assign that user local launch and local activation permissions. Now the next user I'm going to add is only required if you're using ASP.NET. That user is called ASP.NET and once again I'll give that user local launch and local activation permissions. Now the final user we'll configure here is only needed if you're using Windows Server 2003 or Vista and higher operating systems.
So that includes Windows 2008, Windows 7, and Vista itself. That account is called Network Service. So we've located it here. And go ahead and give Network Service local launch and local activation permissions. And that's it. Now once again, to summarize this section, administrators and internet guest account must always have local launch and local activation permissions regardless of your version of Windows or if you're using ASP or ASP.NET. ASP.NET machine account must be configured if you're using ASP.NET. It is not required if you're using ASP. And if you're using Windows 2003 or Windows Vista or anything higher, you must configure a network service. Missing any of these accounts for your operating system can cause problems. Once you're finished, click OK and save all of your changes. We're now finished with Com Security Setup. So now that we finished configuring EasyPDF SDK, we just want to do a quick test and make sure everything is working properly. So I've already written a small test script. It's called test.asp, and it's in my IIS root directory. And here's the code that we're going to run. In the code, you can see that I'm using the loader object or service that we configured earlier and I'm instantiating my printer instance using the loader instance. Now here's our input document. I'll go ahead and run my script now. and we've got a successful conversion. Now I'll just go ahead and verify that the PDF really was properly created. My script wrote it out to the root directory of IIS and there's our PDF. And from opening it, we can see that it does contain exactly the same contents as our input document. This concludes our video of how to prepare your server for use with ASP and ASP.NET web applications. Should you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to let us know and we'd be happy to assist you further. And if you are using ASP and ASP.NET and need to convert your documents to PDF, do feel free to download the evaluation version of EasyPDF SDK and give it a go. We hope this was helpful.